Oh, okay. So did you get a little thing that popped up? Yes. It said you have to, I think Zoom yeah. is now doing this. So you have to like consciously make the effort. To right. All right. Probably we're had good. some complaints about that as well, huh? Yep. All right. We're good to go. Okay. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Happy Even After podcast. And I am here today with Carol Hughes, who is a veteran marriage and family therapist and author of the book, Home Will Never Be the Same Again, a guide for adult children of gray divorce. According to recent news articles, gray divorce rates may be increasing in the aftermath of COVID. And even Melinda and Bill Gates just announced they're calling it quits after 27 years of marriage. So we are here today talking all about why gray divorces are spiking and how it impacts adult children who never thought their older parents would split. Carol, welcome. Thank you, Renee. Thank you for having me. I, I was really excited to have this conversation because I have said over all of my years of practicing more times than I can count that I almost think divorce is harder on adult children. Um, and not that it's not hard on young children, but I think people minimize the impact it has on adult children. So I'm so glad that there's actually a book all about this. So let's dive in. What What's happening here? Well, I'm so happy to hear that you're one of the enlightened few <laughs> because most people follow the myth that we have in our culture that uh, it's less traumatic for adult children because they're already adults, right? Even 18 year olds who are quote adults as uh, Bill and Melinda Gates' youngest daughter I think is turning 18 soon or just has. Uh, and so the idea is that because they're adults they'll just roll with it. It's just one of those things that happens and you'll just get over it. And aren't you glad that you weren't six years old when this happened? And uh, adult children constantly report that they hear those kind of statements from people. And the reason it can be more traumatic for the adult children is that it's their whole life as they've known it. They've been on the planet a lot longer. They've been with these parents a lot longer, family traditions, you know, the list goes on. And they start saying nev all the nevers that we're going to be dealing with. You know, we'll never be in the family home again together. We'll never have celebrations together. And we'll never, maybe if they have children of their, are, their own already, they'll never know their grandparents together. Things like that. So there's a lot of loss, uh, more loss than it is for minor children because minor children haven't had the same life experiences as the adult children. So why are the numbers increasing for couples who are in their a different past a certain age, what we're calling gray divorce? And what is gray divorce considered, yes. first of all? Thank you. That's a very good question. <laughs> well, in 2004, uh, the American Association of Retired People, AARP, had an article in their newsletter, and they were talking about the phenomenon of gray divorce, which actually... Um, the Bowling Green State University researchers started researching uh, the American, the U.S. Census in uh, the late, uh, late 2008-9, right in there. And they found shockingly, because no one had investigated this, that between 1990 and 2010, the divorce rate for the gray divorce population, which is 50 years and older, doubled in those two decades. And then when they studied it further up through 2015, it was still doubling and they applied their analytics, you know, these researchers, and they have predicted that it will triple by 2030. And another interesting fact that they found was that the divorce rate for the 65 year old people and older from 1990 to 2015 tripled. Wow. So yes. what's going on here? What do you well, think the causes? A lot of causes, we think, and the research indicates people are living longer. And so the marriage till death do us part isn't necessarily, you know, what uh, people are thinking about now. People are expecting to have happiness. And if people have been together for 20, 30, 40 years, even 50, some of them, raising children focused on maybe their careers, uh, and now the children are gone. 
empty nesters or maybe the you know college or even the older adult children like in their 40s and 50s. The research on adult children of gray divorce covers um, 18 year olds to 50 year olds. So that's a wide range. So the maybe have fallen out of love, drifted apart. Uh, women are not as um, dependent now on their husbands and partners as decades ago. The research indicates that most American women have jobs or professions outside the home as well. Uh, so all of those are factors in the gray divorce phenomenon. Now, I have had so many people, men and women alike over the years sit across from me and their kids are off to college and they say, well, things have been really bad for a really long time, but we stuck it out for the sake of the kids. Is right. that a noble endeavor or is it actually causing more harm to their children? I think it's noble from the parent's perspective. Uh, but what the, re the little bit of research, there isn't a lot, a lot of research yet on adult children of gray divorce, indicates that the majority of adult children say that they wish they had not done that because some of the, the statements they make is, was my whole life a fraud? Was everything smoke and mirrors? I had no idea that they weren't happy. All those vacations we had when they were smiling, were they really not happy? Was this just like a Disneyland front? Um, and, and as we were talking a few minutes ago, what they've lost is their whole life experience. And they talk about their family was their rock, their foundation. Uh, and so it makes them start to question their own identity. We were the perfect family, maybe. Uh, we were in the community. Everybody thought, you know, they were, you know, Ken and Barbie quote. Uh, so it's a, it's a big shock for a lot of adult children. The, the research shows the majority of adult children. And sometimes, you know, kids, kids know, they know when there's an unhappy home and they see it, they see the parents fighting, they see mm -hmm. the tension, they see them sleeping in separate bedrooms. And I think as parents, we think just by keeping them together is that one thing that's going to protect them and keep them happy. And mm -hmm. it's not the case and they grow up. I mean, are there, so let me ask you this question then, are there, so the, the couple that stays together and there's conflict in the house and the kids are continuously exposed to it, what type of outcome or risk do the children uh, have now because they've been exposed to that really unhealthy, toxic environment rather than the parents separating early on? Right. Um, and that's always a question. You know, that's a question I would say that most parents ask. And if you look at it from a family systems perspective, we learn how to be in relationships in our family of origin. So kids have no, minor children have no other experience of what uh, life in a marriage is like, except for their parents, right? Unless they go to their friends' houses and, you know, see those parents interacting, but day in, day out, they absorb what, you know, almost by like osmosis, what their parents are experiencing. And so they learn what unhealthy relationships are like, mm -hmm. and it, it sets them up to potentially repeat that cycle. Uh, once they go into their dating and even marital relationships. Yeah, yeah. So there's also statistics that are showing that the gray divorce rate is rising in the, the time that we've been dealing with COVID. Do you have any indication of why that is? Well, we can only speculate right now because it's too soon for research. Of course, it takes a long time to do research. Uh, but we have some, some things that we can point to. So first of all, what we know from when China and Italy came out of their first lockdown last year, their divorce rates spiked. So that might be going on in the United States as well. Uh, another issue is that we know from other research, not about COVID, that when families, couples and families spend a lot of time together in close quarters, like during the winter, or you know, in, in colder climates, I'm in Southern California, but still, or vacations, or you know, those family holidays where people get together. Um, often the divorce rate spikes after those close encounters, so to speak. So that's ha been happening, of course, in uh, COVID. 
the other interesting statistics, there are some out already about COVID. Many mental health organizations uh, and associations started studying the rates of depression and anxiety uh, starting in April of last year. And they compared the rates of depression that were reported and anxiety to you know, family physicians, hotlines, et cetera. And in the same months throughout 2020, the divorce rate and I mean, sorry, the depression rate and the anxiety rate was tripling compared to the month before in 2019. Then we have the economic stressors. Kids were at home, you know, being schooled from Zoom and uh, parents were working from home, all that close quarters that we're talking about earlier. Some parents lost their jobs, so that emotion, that economic stress. So a lot of stressors occurred and, and people couldn't get out and do the, their normal leisure activities, go to the movies. So that's a lot of stress, the most stress that most people have gone through in their lifetimes because we haven't experienced anything like COVID for about a hundred years. And I can say that my family law firm has seen such an increase in cases and calls and consultations. Mm -hmm. like more than we ever have. It's, it's mind blowing um, how yeah. busy it is. Um, and it got so quiet initially, those first two mm -hmm. months, it was like silence, radio silence. We're like, you know, right. what's happening here. And then there was, right. then the phone started ringing and they just didn't stop. So right. It's, right. it's crazy. So let's talk about Bill and Melinda Gates for a second, because everyone, you know, everyone likes to speculate and everyone has like the, the chatter and like, oh, if it can happen to them, it can happen to anyone. But generally speaking, they've been married for a really long time. Um, you know, you, you can't, you, the, a lot of the comments that I've heard specifically about them is why couldn't they just make it work? Like, why not just okay. stick it out? Um, and I think that that's a lot of comments when we hear somebody who has been married a really long time. It's mm -hmm. like, well, why are they doing this now? Do you have any insight into that and into really what might be missing that forces that couple to make such a bold move? Right, definitely. As, as, and, and as you were saying earlier, a lot of parents stay together for the kids when they realize that their marriage is really, um, well, it's not what they want it to be. They're not as happy as they thought they would be at this stage of their life. Uh, and as I was saying earlier, the happiness factor in, in this these generations, the great divorce generations, uh, were raised to think, you know, we deserve to be happy. And that whole, uh, the research with divorce uh, indicates the acceptance of divorce in the U.S. Uh, in, um, I think it was around 2012, about 40 something percent of the US population thought that divorce was morally and ethically okay. And by 2018, it was already up into the 60%. So that happiness factor is a big part of it. Uh, and people are saying, uh, yeah, well, we could stick it out, but why? Yeah. You know, we've drifted apart. And as of course, most people have read, you know, Bill and Linda, Melinda Gates announced uh, we, we can't, we don't believe we can any longer grow together. Yeah. And, you know, that's what partnership is about. And so I think uh, we think a lot of um, great divorce couples are looking at that next stage of their lives. I think they even mentioned that to Bill and Melinda Gates, the next stage of our lives. Um, they want something more than what they've had. Now, you're also a private practitioner as well as an author, but mm -hmm. I'm curious, um, in your private practice, are you still seeing the word and the feelings of shame attached to divorce? Because I think that that is something that has, like you say the word divorce and the person who's going through mm -hmm. it, it's shame is the next word that they feel or embarrassment. Is that still something or is divorce becoming more mainstream? I think uh, both. <laughs> divorce is becoming more mainstream from the statistics, obviously. And what I certainly see, and I'm not a shame expert, there are whole books written on that as well, shame and divorce, but I'm continually hearing, you know, I'm, I'm ashamed, I'm frustrated, I feel embarrassed, why couldn't we make it work? The same question that the people are asking of, of them, you know, why can't you make it work? You've been together 20, 30 years. Um, 
the younger folks have been married, you know, uh, 10, 12, 15 years. They seem to have a bit, just as just uh, anecdotally in my practice, a little bit different attitude. It's like, well, you know, we did the best we could and uh, we're going to stay amicable um, because I do a lot of work in mediation and collaborative divorce, cooperative divorce. So the younger generation seem to be looking at a more peaceful way in general. Um, it, and my experience anecdotally, anecdotally in my practice. So let's go back and talk a little bit more about um, the children of gray divorce. How can parents help their children adjust through this time? Number one is believe what you and I are talking about, which is that it does affect their adult children um, in many, many ways. Uh, and number second number is number two is to listen. And research in our field shows that when we listen deeply to understand, not to judge, blame, criticize, convince the other person to see it our way, but we're simply listening to what that person is saying, that's part of healing. So that can help their adult children feel heard, which is really important to human beings. Uh, and then also, explain to your adult children that hopefully you're going to do this divorce in a peaceful family focused way that you're going to do everything you know how to do to focus on family and that the family is reorganizing it's not being destroyed um, because this is their family for their whole entire life 18 20 30 40 years however long and that you're going to do your best to be able to be in the same room you know for birthdays, graduations, births, all kinds of ceremonies, holidays, and that the family is restructured, as I said before, and that you don't want your adult children to feel like they have to pick sides, you know, like there's a bad parent and a good parent, which is difficult in some divorces. But, you know, if we, if we come in with thinking about how can I be my highest self, during this divorce process, because we know that divorce can be very bitter and very negative and, and very destructive. So if you can focus that way, and there's a lot of help out there. There are a lot of professionals. You, for example, you're a mediator, you're a collaborative divorce professional, which focuses on peaceful, respectful, dignified ways to end a marriage. All of those will help your adult children as well. And to add to that is keep your kids out of it. I, we, we hear this all the time as divorce mm -hmm. professionals is, well, they're adults. They have a right to know that their father was a jerk or that right. he did this. And, you know, I still believe to some extent you should be protecting them a little bit and not being like, just because they're adults, they don't need to know every dirty detail of what happened in your marriage or the breakdown of it. Um, and we see that like over and over again. And that's where kids then start to pick sides or they feel like right. they have to take care of one of the parents or lift them up. Um, which is why I think that it's, it's so much harder for adult children because now they're taking on this role that if they were six years old, they may not have to. And the parents like intuitively, most parents protect their kids from this mm -hmm. information and that falls away when they're, when they're adults. So interesting. Right. Right. You know, and you said that some parents, and you're right, many parents think that their children have, a, their adult children have a right to know about their other parent. More important than that, they have a right to have a relationship with that parent, separate from how they were in the marriage. Because if they take on the pain and the burden of the parent that was, quote, wounded by the other parent, that that's a burden that really does not belong to the adult children. That's that parent's burden to bear. That's who they were married to. Go work with a clergy person, a professional therapist, counselor, psychologist, whomever. Work through that on your own. If you're that wounded parent, don't pull your kids into carrying that burden for you. It's not their burden to carry. Right. 
So that, I think that's the sound bite right there. Is that is that whole little clip? It's so good. So let's talk about your book. You co-wrote it with Bruce uh, Friedenberg, who is not with us today, but um, he uh, wrote. He's also a veteran marriage and family therapist. Um, and the two of you wrote this book called "Home Will Never Be the Same Again: A Guide for Adult Children of Gray Divorce." Can you talk a little bit about the book? Sure. Um, it's one of those synchronicity uh, stories, and I'll be brief. Um, the, the, the agent that asked me would I write this, would I consider writing this book, had read an article that I was interviewed in the New York Times by a reporter who was doing an article about adult children of gray divorce back in spring of 2016. I'm one of those people when something like that comes to me, I just say yes, because, you know, and Bruce and I have many partial books in our in our computers over the years that we wanted to do and just never finished because we're so busy. So I said yes, and I asked Bruce if he would like to co-author it with me because we have a little bit different writing styles and speaking styles. So he said yes. And it ended up being an almost four-year journey uh, doing the research and writing and so forth. But in our work as, as collaborative in mediation and divorce professionals, we have worked with a lot of adult children and did see that they, they would say things like, we're invisible. Nobody sees what you know, we're going through. Nobody listens to what we're saying. They, they believe we don't have any feelings. This is crazy. So our goal in writing the book was to give these adult children a voice. And you know, we have stories in there that are obviously protected by confidentiality with different names and composite stories of what some of these adult children told us and some that are in the research. And it helps each adult child and their parents. We want the parents to read the book too, because a lot of parents are repeating the same cycle, you know, that maybe their parents were divorced. And there's also a chapter in the book that directed to the parents. Uh, go, back, go back to one of the questions you asked me earlier, what can parents do, you know, to help their adult children? So there's all about healing, uh, attachment bonding, grieving, the stages of adult development, many people are telling us since the book's been out, we never even thought of stages of adult development. Even people in the mental health field have said, wow, when I read the book, I didn't even, I feel bad. I didn't even think that adults go through stages of development, just like yeah. children, minor children. I started reading it yesterday as I was getting ready for our chat today. It's so good. Um, it's Thank so you. good. I can't wait to get through the rest of it. And this book will be on my recommended reading list because I do have one that I give to clients. I give for four children, for the adults. Um, it's it's mm -hmm. that good. And there aren't many conversations about this particular type of divorce out there. And you do it beautifully. So Thanks. how do we um, how do we buy the book? And how do we find you on social media and connect? Okay, so the book's available, of course, on Amazon and a hardback, which is how the publisher first publishes, uh, Kindle and audiobook through Audible. It's also available on the publisher's website, which is Roland and Littlefield in hardback and ebook. So that's where an ebook can be purchased. Uh, we are on social media um, at the title of the book, Home Will Never Be the Same Again. That's the uh, landing page to go to uh, Amazon. Um, my Instagram is at gray divorce or dr.carol.hughes. And so I have two of those for the divorce, my divorce work and for my therapy work. And then Facebook, of course, and LinkedIn. Um, and uh, my website is divorcepeacemaking.com. That's my divorce website. And so, my therapy website is drcarolhughes.com. So lots of ways to connect with yes. you. Um, and you, you are a private practitioner. Um, you're also an author. You are in this, this divorce space specifically. Um, so all of the work that you do over all of the years has been dedicated um, mm -hmm. to all of this. And you have so many accolades, which will be part of the, the uh, notes on this when the podcast releases. But thank you so much for spending this past half hour with thank us. You. Thank you for sharing your calm and um, just your words. There's just so much wisdom in between the pages of that book. So everyone needs to pick up a copy of it. Thanks, Carol. Thanks, Renee. Thanks for having me.